What's up guys, how you doing? I hope you are well. Welcome to another video and today on Gear and Tips Tuesdays we are talking panning photography. What is panning photography? How do you do it properly? It's going to be a great video, let's get into it. So that's right guys, another Gear and Tips Tuesday video. I'm enjoying this little mini series. It's cool to do something each week that focuses a bit more on like a tip or a technique or, or perhaps a piece of gear. Today we're very much talking around the tips and technique side of it. And as I said in the intro right there, we are talking about panning photography. Before we get into the subject of the video, if you do enjoy this one, please do hit that like button, hit the thumbs up. Um, you guys support the channel, it's amazing. Probably the biggest thing you could do to to support my channel is to hit that like button on each and every video why would you not do it anyway but it would be cool to do it I was having to look back actually I haven't had a 100 likes on a single video back since the beginning of 2018 now part of that is because some of the algorithm stuff from 2018 to 19 basically stitched me up a bit and my views dropped way down um, but it would be awesome we've had a few like 60 something 70 somethings it would be awesome to get 100 likes on a video perhaps this video could be the one but it's only going to happen if you guys help us out and go press that button at the same time if you're new around here and you haven't subscribed already please do think about it loads of other cool videos to come on this channel loads more already on there as well which you should go and check out and have a look don't forget to go check out my social media channels guys you can find me over on instagram specifically for this video you will want to go and check out my at rob sandal sport channel on instagram because there's lots of photos on there using the panning technique which i posted in the last few days which i'm sure you'll be interested to see off the back of watching this video you can also find me on instagram in two other places at scorchers photog and also at rob sandals photo and you can find me on twitter using that at rob sandals photo as well so without further ado, let's talk about panning photography. Now, I filmed a lot of this video um, in past Rob a couple of days ago over at the Wings and Wheels show in Dunsfold, specifically talking about photographing cars as the subject of my panning photos. But I thought I'd give it a quick intro right here before we hand over to past Rob back at Wings and Wheels and just wanted to touch on the specifics of panning photography. Of course, when I talk about that, I'm talking about a technique where you track a moving subject um, using a lower shutter speed so that you have the subject itself in nice clean focus and the background kind of blurred in such a way that it demonstrates motion across the picture. Um, it's really great for using things like cars because you really add that sort of um, element of power and speed to an, an image. Um, I love it. It's a technique I, I really enjoy um, and a technique which I used a lot on the weekend at Wings and Wheels. Now that type of technique with panning photos is achieved by using a really sh uh, slow shutter speed and then trying to track so you move your lens at roughly the same speed that your subject is moving. Now that takes a lot of practice. Um, what I would suggest and the way in which I shot these cars for example on the show on Saturday is I started by tracking them from well before the point where I wanted to take the photo. So let's say for example I wanted to take the photo um, smack bang in front of me here I started tracking the car from um, a point way over here, got the car in my sights through the viewfinder down the end of the lens and started to follow it so that I knew I was going at roughly the same speed as the car until I got to the point where I was in front of me and then bam, I took the photo. Um, if you don't track that car and if you don't get your lens moving at roughly the same speed as the car, it will not work out and your photo will be blurred, which happens an awful lot with panning photos. So I'm going to hand over to other Rob from a couple of days ago at Wings and Wheels uh, and going to get into the detail of panning photography. Okay guys, so I walked down to the motoring paddock because I felt like that was the more suitable place to talk to you guys about car panning photos. Uh, I also put my rain jacket on because there's threats that it's going to rain uh, any time now. The sky doesn't look so great. So panning photos right now, obviously when you're taking photographs of cars, they're moving really fast and sports photographers like myself the uh, the kind of opinion that you would have is it's moving fast so I need a really fast shutter speed in order to freeze the action and take the photo 
Now that's true mostly, but with cars, the problem is if you take a photo of a moving car that is going really quick at like 100 miles an hour, and you take a photo at, you know, 1250 um, shutter speed or a thousandth of a second shutter speed, you freeze the car and it freezes everything. It freezes the movement in the wheels, it freezes the car itself, of course, and it makes it look a bit like this. And you can see what I mean right here, guys. The wheels are still, the background's still. It looks like a parked car. Now, whilst that might be a nice photo, it, it looks like that car is just parked out there on the runway because the wheels are still. And so what we want to do is we want to slow down the shutter speed so you get the movement. You get the movement in the wheels and you get that nice, like, creamy, sort of blurred background um, where the car is moving. So how do you achieve that? You do that with a slower shutter speed. But the problem is if you just take a photo of a car at a sh slower shutter speed, it's going to be all blurred. And so the only way to counteract that is to do what we call a panning shot, where you move with the speed of the car. And the idea being that if you're traveling at the same speed of the car with your camera, you'll take the photo, you could hopefully get the car to be nice and crisp and tack sharp, and all the background will be blurred and the wheels will be spinning, and it will really add the motion to a picture. So the kind of thing we're aiming for is something like these next couple of images that I will put into the video right here. Okay, so, we're gonna head out, the cars are about to go in a second. We're gonna head out and see if we can get some photos like that. Um, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the stuff I've had to do in order to try and achieve those. The basics to start with is I need my long lens. I wanna be quite in close to the car. I need my monopod because I wanna be as stable as I possibly can. I don't want the lens to be moving up and down or, or moving. I just literally wanna focus on that nice, real smooth one side to the other motion that I'm gonna capture with the car. So let's go try and get the photos and then we'll talk about how I did it. Now, I think I should just jump in at this point guys because past Rob didn't really talk about the specifics of like settings with this kind of technique. Normally when I'm doing um, panning photography I will try to get a shutter speed of probably around like one two hundredth of a second something like that. Now what I should say and the biggest caveat to this is please remember your hit rate with these photos will be really low. To give you an idea I probably had something like one in ten of these panning photos um, come out sharp enough that I was happy with it because of course when you're moving at one two hundredth of a second you've got to get your camera lens moving at the exact same speed as that car and if you don't and you're off even by a tiny bit it blurs the car in the picture and then you can't use it so I think a warning here your hit rate will be really really low you want to aim for about one two hundredth of a second shutter speed if you're shooting in the middle of the day um, and to make it easier for you for yourself you could um, shoot in shutter priority mode uh, which is the TV mode for those of you guys using Canon I think it's something similar on, on, on a Nikon and you could then set that to 200 um, and then don't worry too much about the aperture the camera will take care of that for itself if you guys are, are manual shooters and you're shooting in the middle of the day of course if you're shooting at one two hundredth of a second you're going to be needing an aperture of like kind of f11 f14 something like that because otherwise your image is going to be really overexposed if you're shooting in the middle of the day like i was um, i think that's enough of the technicalities if you guys have any more specific questions about that please feel free to add it into the comments and as always i will try to come back and answer in there anyway let's get back to future rob past rob future rob let's get back to past rob so he can go take some photos whilst we're down here in the paddock guys I just had to quickly share with you the noise that this nascar is making come and check this out come listen to this noise So noisy, so noisy. You probably can't even hear me, but so noisy. Right, let's go take some panning photos. Now you might have seen that drag bike out there earlier with the extensions on the back. That was uh, Carrie Wadey in his...
And that's pretty much how we got on on the day, guys. I think we got some awesome images. I hope you guys liked some of them. I'll put a couple more of them at the end of this video as well. Uh, really pleased with how they came out. And I really experimented quite a lot there. And I went right the way down to some really low shutter speeds. Um, I think probably about sort of 1 25th of a second um, was as slow as I went. So all in all, I think that pretty much rounds up today's Gear and Tips Tuesdays. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Of course, I will see you next Tuesday for another episode from this series. But before then, I will see you towards the end of the week where we've got another cool video. I won't spoil it. I won't tell you what, about, what it's about, but it's going to be a good one. Should be out either Friday, Saturday or Sunday. But I will announce it on Twitter, of course, when it's coming out. So make sure you follow me on Twitter if you don't already. If you haven't already, go hit that thumbs up button, like the video, subscribe if you guys are new. And I will see you on the next video. Yeah.